Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. So today I'm actually still waiting for some parts to come in that I've ordered. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue working on the smaller details of the car. For example, the rear uh, hatch has the plate where the license plate goes. I'm gonna go ahead and recoat that in a flat black. As well, the side mirrors that I had, I know I previously mounted them on the car, but you can see right there, there's some damage to them that it's just best that I go ahead and get those uh, fixed up and recoded. We're gonna take care of these headlights, similar to what I did in the um, uh, previous videos with the rear tail lights, how they were damaged. 600 down with some wet sanding and then uh, re-clear that a bunch of times and then probably tomorrow once it's dry, go ahead and polish it up wet sand it down as well if there is any orange peel, but we'll see how this goes this evening. I do have the Honda right now outside. It may rain this evening, so I have to work kind of quickly but efficiently to get this done, so let's get to it. So you can see the damaged, damaged uh, section right there. I'm gonna try and wet sand that out with 600. See how it goes. That scuff is no longer there after the wet sand of the 600, so it's nice. All right, so after about five minutes of wet sanding with 600 grit sandpaper, this is what we're looking like. We've gotten rid of majority of the yellowing and the damaged plastic on the headlight. In comparison to that, what we're looking for is just that similar haze, but um, at the same time, we wanna really try and make sure that we kinda of go over the entire thing, making sure that there's no leftover yellowing of the damaged clear coat or the damaged plastic on the headlight. Unfortunately, we couldn't leave it at this type of a point and just call it quits and then just polish this out because the uh, yellowing and the damage would come back twice as fast if we were to go ahead and just mount this back onto the car. So it's important to protect this. So we're just gonna throw on a UV resistant clear coat. Also one that is just non-yellowing as well. So I've gone ahead and I've thrown on the first coat, kind of just a light coat on this. I was using the, the hair dryer to heat it up a little bit just to kind of quicken up that in between time for painting or drying. Uh, just a little colder here in the garage. I do have the heater on, but um, I'm just gonna wait a few minutes before I go ahead and throw on a second coat. I'm also going to just quickly scuff those guys again because I don't wanna have any overspray potentially from the work that I'm doing right now landing on there and kind of affecting it. But uh, just gonna let this cure up get the second coat on there, be done with that, and then move on to those guys and get that cleared up and be done for the evening. All right, so unfortunately last night didn't go completely as planned. I started clear coating the headlights and ran into an issue on the first coat of clear. Now, I've actually already started sanding this down, but I wanted to show you guys before I take it all the way down. You can see right here um, the clear coat actually failing. It almost looks like um, crow's feet. I believe that's what they call it, but the clear coat was actually cracking. So that could have been caused by multiple reasons. For example, just not having a properly clean surface. Um, I ran out of solvent, so I just used an alternative cleaner. Um, at the same time, the clear coat could have been just applied too heavy on that first coat causing that failure. What you have to do is you actually have to re-sand that down all the way back to where you were at the beginning and just make sure you clean it again and prep it hopefully right that time and re-clear it and hopefully it works. So I'm gonna try and do a much thinner first coat to try and avoid that cracking issue and then start laying heavier and heavier and heavier as I go. 
All right, so the second time around with the application of doing the clear coat on the headlights went a lot smoother. I did about five layers, pretty thin layers of clear, and then ended up sanding it down with 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000, and then just polished it out, and this is what we're looking like. Now that this is dry, we're gonna go ahead and put it on the car, but before I go ahead and do that, I actually have to replace my rear hatch lock. So we're gonna throw this guy in there and just remove this. So we're gonna loosen off that bolt uh, and then take everything out and do the switch. All right, so 10 mil to release this. Rusty. So now that you get that removed, before we actually rotate this and push this through, we first have to release the lock rod inside. I believe that's the lock rod. But once we get that off, we should be able to twist it and push it out. Nice thing with this clip is it's actually an open face clip. So all you have to literally do is pull this rod downwards and it'll pop right out. After you got the rod off, simply just rotate and pull it through. So the first thing we're gonna do is release this little lock that we have here. Get it to this point where I can get something as small as this tiny little screwdriver in here. Pinch it and try and just go upwards with it. Okay, so that's off. Try not to lose that. If under pressure, that probably will fling, so keep it close. We'll remove this piece through the channel. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this one to remove this piece here. And then we'll replace it and put it on the other one. I just kind of have that little lock in there lined up. Try and do this with a pair of pliers, but we'll just grab both the lock and kind of the main housing on it and pinch it in there together. Next thing, put it through, tighten in that 10 millimeter bolt and then line up this little clip here again and then um, Put the lock piece inside the house, inside that little opening, okay? And then with that clip, you're gonna try and wanna hold both of them together. I'm trying to do this with one hand is a little difficult. That clip, we'll just clip back down. Next, we're gonna put back in the lights, but as you can see, there's a lot of debris inside these lights, so nice thing you can do is just actually take them apart and uh, go ahead and clean it. But first, we're gonna remove this light. Now that I have the light removed, I can actually go ahead and just remove that rubber seal and I can go ahead and clean up in this area here and inside as well and just make this look a little bit cleaner. So just after a quick rinse in the sink, uh, much cleaner, much nicer. I'm not too worried about having to clear these or anything like that, so I'm gonna put these back on the car right now. Throw those screws back in. Next thing we can do, we can put our cover back in. gonna clip in the center and then now I have to just go ahead and put those screws or those nuts back on but other than that that's how we're looking So that's gonna close up today's episode. I know it kind of just bounced around on a lot of different things, but in the meantime, while I'm waiting for those parts to come in, I'm just gonna continue working on the small miscellaneous things, just really bringing them back to life. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Hit that like button if you did, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you in the next episode of Garage Specific.